Before I introduce the guests that we have here, um, damn, man, I, I, I keep losing track of these episodes, but guess what? This is Elephant Pick. Welcome to Elephant Pick. I got another fire episode with a fire artist and some fire vibes coming up for you. We have self-made Kev in the building. Make some noise, y'all. Make some noise, self-made Kev. Yes, you are here, and, and this was this was um, this was supposed to happen a long time ago. Well, for sure, I, I feel like it. You feel like it, but guess what? We here, right? Well, it's perfect time. Better not perfect time. We're gonna talk about that because you right, said that right, in one right, of your right, songs right. that I want to I, I want to ask you about that. But um, self made Kev, where are you from, bro? I'm from the Bronx, New York. BX. Do you wanna Do you wanna tell us exactly where in the Bronx? From Highbridge. Highbridge. Yeah, I grew up on Highbridge. I grew up in Highbridge too. Where? I uh, on Nelson. Oh, for real? Yeah, I went to I went to Sacred Heart. I was a private school kid. Oh, you went to Sacred Heart. I went to Sacred Heart. Yeah, so I was one of those kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah but uh, yeah, that's crazy. Highbridge. Yeah. That's, that's what's up. Okay. So on where, Summit. where? Where? Summit. Okay. Six on Summit. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. So from the Bronx. Are you Dominican? Yeah, I am Dominican. Oh, you are. Because yeah. at first I was trying to figure that out too. I was like, oh, is he Dominican? He gives me Dominican vibes, but he also gives me like light skinned black dude vibes. I, I don't know what it is, but all right, all right, Delomino. Delomino, say no more. You speak Spanish too, right? I speak Spanish. Really. All right, just make it sure. All right. Yeah. So talk to me about Self Made Kev. How, how, did, how did this all begin? How did you get your name? Like, uh, give me all the info, bro. I really got my name. I had that name since I was 13, like freshman year of high school. Um, that was when Instagram started getting popping. So I had my boy switch. I had I told him, "Yo, bro, make me an Instagram." Cause you just told him like yeah, instead like, of you making your own. Nah, cause he was telling me like make, make Instagram. Make it. So I'm like, bro, make it for me. So he made it for me. And he put a self made Kev. And you just went like that. And that's been my Instagram name since since I was 13. So now when I ended up wanting a rap and shit, me trying to find a rap name, I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna just leave it at self made Kev. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Self made. Like, independent. That was crazy. Like that story is still crazy to me to this day. Yeah, that it just came up I like that. I was really struggling to get a rap name. I couldn't think of nothing. So I'm like, fuck it, self made Kev. Hey, I, I think it works. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think and it, it really um it really like um represents me. Cause I'm really self made ever since I was young. Like even playing sports, like everything I've done I've been doing it myself with no help from anybody. So even getting a full ride scholarship, I was able to do that on my own. I didn't have help from anyone. So damn. All right. Was, what, was it like a sports scholarship? Was it academic scholarship? Sports, sports, sports. Yeah. sports. Baseball. Baseball. Mm -hmm. Let me guess. You played third base. Shortstop. Damn. I was yeah. close. <laughs> yeah, he gave me the gave me the I vibe. A little third too. Yeah, a little third. Whatever it feels necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now, tell me how how did this uh this 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 you want like you wanted to start rapping? How did that come about? What uh, how, what was the whole I was, my, that. I was in my third year of playing college baseball, but like I wasn't doing good in my classes. So it was like that was gonna be my last year. So if it was that year, if it was that year that I was gonna get drafted or not, it was gonna be over regardless. So obviously I didn't. I had a great year. I hit twelve home runs, hit over three hundred, but I didn't get drafted. So I was like, fuck it, I don't wanna play no more. It's tough. Yeah, definitely tough. It's a lot of politics in it. Yeah. Just like music. So but I feel like in music I could I could control my own destiny better than baseball. Because you got a time limit in baseball. Music, you don't got no time limit. You could blow up in 10 years. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to quit playing baseball. But I still want to be rich. For me, I don't Makes wanna, sense. Yeah, I still want to <laughs> be rich. So it's like, what else to do than rap? I'm already doing shit that these rappers talking about. So it's like, fuck it, I might as well just try it. Never rapped in my life. Never spit, no freestyle, none of that. I just started from right then and there. I was like... 21 basically and you just you just took it that far yeah that, that's crazy yeah, you right. you so you really had no, no like oh one day i want to be a rapper you just like no, you know what no. you just flipped the switch yeah and it's kind of like how your name came about too like, just, mm -hmm. just flip i never the thought i was gonna be a rapper like nah never ever i don't know like i wanted to live the, the lifestyle i thought it was cool being a rapper being able to do whatever you want to do get fresh you know what i'm saying like i wanted to be in that mix but never wanted to be a rapper you know what i mean Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That's 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 yeah. pretty interesting. Usually, the, you know, the people that I interview, they're like, "Yo, I've always wanted to, no. you know, put together words in a, in a certain way." So, tell me more about about your your, your musical style because I, I I'm curious as to you have can, can I say is more like a very calm, right, 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 relaxing, like almost lazy flow. So, like, mm -hmm. can you tell me more about the style that that you chose, like how you came about? I don't really choose it. That's just the way I am. Oh, okay. Like, I'm already chilled. Laid back. I don't really speak too much. I don't really talk loud. So it's like the same way I talk is the same way I rap. So it's like 
It's I'm effortless. noticing that now. Yes, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really just effortless. Like, and before when I first started, a lot of people try to tell me like, put some more energy in your music, like, and I just couldn't do it. Like, I really can't do it. So it's like, now that I see it's trending to rap like this, it's really working in my favor to keep doing it the way I'm doing it. That, yeah. that, 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 that's what's up. But yeah. all right, yeah. I understand that you rapping is not something that you chose. Mm -hmm. To do it just kind of happen, and you just said, you know what, I just want to get the, but you got to have some kind of influences. Uh, influence, I'll say, like, just watching A Boogie come up. Okay. And, like, seeing that he did it independently, no label, and just the attention He's from Highbridge, he got. too? Yeah, he's from Highbridge. I, I saw the attention he got from, like, just dropping shit on SoundCloud and shit like that. I was like, damn, like, at that time, I wasn't even thinking about rapping, but when I did start thinking about rapping, I was thinking about how... He did it like it's possible before i thought like you need a label you need like to drop a song you need somebody from uh interscope or sony to be able to do that like but obviously you don't have to you could drop it on soundcloud and drop it on youtube and you good and my first song i dropped it on soundcloud and that shit got a little bit of buzz so i'm like fuck it i'm gonna just run with it so uh, as a obviously as an independent artist how do you how do you how do you build that buzz for people to even, because there's a million artists out there that want to get uh, their stuff played and, and get people to listen, but they can't. Nah, it's so so how do you, how do you it's build hard, that? It's hard, bro. It's hard. You just got to already, sometimes people come in rapping, they already have some sort of popularity. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, I was already kind of popular. I was a good athlete, very well known for being good at baseball. Um, I was throwing parties, like house parties and shit like that. I've always been fresh since I was young, so it's like, already off the rip, people are already gonna fuck with me just cause, oh, that's Kev, yeah, I'm gonna fuck with Kev no matter what. So that helped me. I got a strong team too, like, it takes a strong team. Like, I got at least 15 people that I could call my brother that, on my, that they on my team. So it's like 15 people, show it to 10 people, that's already 150 people listening to my music off the rip, you know what I'm saying? So. That's, oh. that's, uh, you're, you're, I, I'm going to say that you're very fortunate to be able to call 15 to 10 people up and be like, yo, that's the bro. Yeah. Because okay. a lot of people, uh, <laughs> they don't even have one person like that that's right, like, right, yo, right, like a, right. a reliable person. And I'm glad that, that you acknowledge the team. Yeah. You know, because it, it, it really takes. Yeah. You can't do it by yourself. A lot of, a lot of people think they can do it by themselves. You can't do it by yourself. It's yeah. impossible. So when, when, when did it become like, yo, this is getting pretty serious? Uh, last year. Yeah? Yeah. So, last talk to me about year. that. It was just switching on my sound, like, because I used to rap with, like, autotune, because my life was just different. About two, three years ago, my life was different. Like, I was going through a lot, having my court case, having gone to jail, having... And I want to talk about that in a few, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Having to deal with all that, like, depression and shit, so it's like, I was really rapping about what I'm going through, so I was using autotune, I was going more of the melodic. Not really much melodic, but, like, just using auto tune and like melodic beats. So once I got a, once I got away from that, I did my time. I came out of jail, turned up. My sound changed. Like I'm like I don't gotta rap like that no more. Like my life is different now. So I started using better beats, more like like being able to pop my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like beats like that. So that shit really like. Once I did a snippet of that, I did a snippet to um spin a dub. That got me the most attention I ever got in my whole music career. So it was like, damn, like, this is really what people want to hear. So I started just doing songs like that. I did Walk Walk, I did Trap Open. I just started going like that. And that's when I came up with my tape. And people started fucking with me. And that shit broke me up. Like, that shit. And last year, that was when the rap career got serious. Just all doing songs like that. Nice. I, and, and I want to dial it back just a little bit because you said before... Um, you know, you had your whole situation, the legal situation. You right. said you were you were rapping with auto tune, mm -hmm. and you were dealing. You said with depression, anxiety. Yeah, like, right. what, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, like, we could talk. Like, it's just dealing with depression, just shit not going my way. Like, you know, you you're in the streets, you're trying to make money in the streets, shit not going your way. You get a little depressed. Like, you can't really handle your own as a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just got out of school. I ain't never worked in my life. I was getting money in school, so. Being out of school, coming back to the city, and shit not going my way, shit going left, it's like, it got a little bit depressing. Like, I can't pay for nothing, I can't shoot no videos, I can't go to the stool, I can't fucking do nothing. So that shit got depressing to me, and it got to me. For, you know, in, in, the, in moments like that, it's like, what can you say to somebody that 
perhaps is dealing with a tough moment like that, maybe an yeah. artist or, or, or just anybody, like, in those moments, how do, you, how do you build yourself to get out of that? You got to just be patient. Like, God's timing is perfect. Like, you'll never know when the worst, you got to be at the worst to go, you got to be at the bottom to get to the top. Like, you can't just be at the top and then you got to start from the bottom and then get to the top. So when you're at the lowest, just know that. That means you're on the way to the top. So you just got to be patient, just pray. You know what I'm saying? Like anything that comes with it, just try to talk to people that that brings positive positive things to your to your mind. That's another thing that's helpful. Like talk to people that's gonna talk to you and make you feel good about your day. Not people that's gonna bring you down. That's another thing that's, that's very and that's very powerful. Yeah, oh yeah. To have people like that close to you. That's and then important. I'm 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 assuming that, you know, having the legal issues didn't help. With no, the I don't know, just waiting because I didn't know if I was gonna do time or not. So just so going can, back to force. Can court. can we talk about that a little bit? Like that yeah. whole scenario, what happened? What, what like you don't gotta give me extra details. It just no, I got caught up in some shit in Maryland. Okay, so I had to keep going back and forth to court to Maryland. You know that's a four hour drive, so I would be leaving at three in the morning to get down seven for court at eight, and they'll tell me, oh, court court date postponed. So I got to drive another four hours, and it's eight fifteen. So. I'm fucking, I, it's an eight hour drive if you really think about Rush it. Rush hour traffic. So I'm exhausted, I'm falling asleep while driving, like crazy shit. Like, it'll be times where I was going by myself. Like, I remember when one of Dirk's albums dropped, um, Love, Love Songs to the Streets 2, that shit dropped and the same day I had a court date. Like, if it wasn't for that album, I probably would have never made it to court because I was by myself just listening to that album back to back. That shit. That's, that's, that's tough. It was tough, bro. Eight hours by yourself, that's tough. And then, and then you officially got, um, correct got me if I'm wrong, it, it got, got locked up, you got indicted? Mm-hmm. I got sentenced uh, March 4th. I got sentenced to 90 days. Um, 60 days. I did 60 days, and my mom and my girl went to court with me. And it was just there. They didn't think I was going to do time. It was my first case and anything like that. So it's like, they think I'm just going to give me probation and I get to go home. They said, you got to do 60 days. I just turned around, they was crying. I'm like, damn, I ain't turning around. No that more. must have, yeah, that must have been a... They put the handcuffs on me, I went, and that's it. Then so, my, um, so do you... Can I you, was really stressed because I had to do um, time on my birthday. Like, <laughs> They got you on your birthday? Nah, not on my birthday. Like, Oh, that it was going to hit your jail. birthday. Yeah, yeah. It was going to be my birthday, I'm going to be in jail. So I'm like, fuck, like, I got to spend jail. I got to spend my birthday in jail, that's pain. Damn. Yeah. I, 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 um, what, what's it like in there? Uh... I don't know, bro. It's, it's Cause you know you, you watch the movies it's, and you watch all this type of shit, I and it's like, like in movies they show you a lot of prison. They don't show you jail. Like, uh, do you want to? Can you explain the difference? I feel like it's different. Like jail is a different system from prison. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a bunch of people there that's waiting to know when they going, what how how much time they gonna do if they gonna get off. So it's like you could be there, you could be in a cell with somebody that just caught a murder and they don't know when, they don't know if they gonna come out or nothing. Like they find anxiety, find depression, and you could be getting out in 30 days. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's mixy, and jail is mixy for sure. <laughs> like my Sally, he did 15 years for almost killing a police officer. Like he wow. stabbed him up. He did 15 years. He was old. He was like 50 or something like that. But he gave me a lot of game. Like he used to pray every day. He used to talk to me all day. Yo, whatever you're doing, it's not worth it. This shit is not cool. Like, so that helped me a lot. And when he left, I ended up praying once. I, I prayed one time on my birthday, April 6th. I'll never forget. That shit changed my life. When I came out of jail, my whole life changed. Everything I prayed for, I got right now. And, it's and, happening right and, now. So you kept a cool head when you were in, in you said jail, not prison. Nah, it was different. Jail, it's different. Yeah, so you were in jail. You, the way that you kept the cool head was just like, well, you prayed that one time and then you yeah. listened to the OGs. Yeah, I listened to the OG. I read a lot. I read like 13 books. Yeah? I mean, yeah. you got a lot of time, right? I read mad books, but I never read so many books in my life. I fucking, um, the radio's on at 10, past 10. Like, there's no service till 10 o'clock at night. That's when you get to listen to the radio. Wow. Yeah, to a certain time. I have, when you're in jail, you want to have bottom bunk, not top bunk, because they don't turn off the light. Oh, yeah, that never right thought of face. that. So he was already in there. So he had bottom bunk yeah. and grip, so I had top bunk. So the light right in my face. Like, I can't even How sleep. the fuck did you sleep? I just... <laughs> Yo, you get it. I guess you got to get forces. Breakfast is at 5 in the morning, so you got to be at 5 in the morning. Yeah, that's earlier than McDonald's breakfast. Yeah. And they wake, <laughs> they wake you up. Like, you're you going to eat breakfast for sure. Yeah? Yeah. I have I know somebody 
that's close to me that was locked up for like I, I would say 15 plus years yeah. and he told me this whole thing about maybe this is different because this might be pr uh, prison but he told me something about like knocking on the table do you get up stuff like that i don't know if, if that's There's something different that's rules like you can't you got a piece on your knee you can't pee standing up because they gonna hear that shit like you don't want to hear the pee while another man's in you uh, on your knee so it's silent pee you know what i mean I, I I don't know what you mean, but now you now I'm, I'm trying to get the picture in my yeah. mind. But that's you gotta pee on your knee. If you're taking a shit, you gotta flush while you're shitting. Uh, constantly, you yeah. Like nobody wanna hear the brrrr. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. yeah nobody wanna smell that shit. Yeah, no, that's There's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit that I learned. And I was in a maximum security jail. Oh wow. So it was I was 23 and one. Like I only got a, a one hour to really be out myself. Damn. Mm, yeah, that shit was hell, bro. Damn. Does does yeah, does any of that uh, affect you to this day? Like, of course, especially now I got a daughter. Like, I just don't want to. She's been, she got like, she got six months. She's six months. So it's like, I haven't spent not one day without her. What? Now, now, if we move forward, you said that life, life completely changed for you. Mm -hmm. As soon as you got out, you had this record called We On. Yeah. And that was the first record that I heard from you. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to I wanna talk a lot about that record because I think one time I was finishing up an interview here and you came in. And uh, shout to Trilla, he played it, yeah, and I and I'm and I'm packing up my stuff, and I'm like, yo, this shit is hard. Like this shit is hard. The beat is hard. Appreciate and then you got the feature on it, which we're also gonna talk about. But 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 tell me, how did that song come about? Like, uh, I wanted. I was listening to ESG a lot, and I was fucking with the producer Forever Rolling. So I'm like, I spoke that's to what he said, Forever Rolling. That's what. Oh, okay. I was trying to figure out what he said there. Okay. I spoke to the guys. I'm like, yo, let's try to get a beat from him. Like, and I was in the airport. I hit him up. Yo, I'm trying to get a beat. He hit me up right away. Hit up my manager. So I hit him up. Said, how much the beat? 2K. All right, next day, I sent him the money. Not bad at all. I bought the beat right away. It's priced all the way up now. So. No, of course. Yeah, not <laughs> at this point. trying to get a beat now. <laughs> he said, all the way up. Unless you got that bag. Yeah. So he sent the, he sent a, a, a bunch of snippets of different beats. So I was going through listening to them. So I had two. that I was like, damn, I don't know which one to pick. So I, I sent it to the guys. I'm like, which one? Either or. And they picked, obviously, we on. The other beat ESCG put it on his album. Oh, would you look at so that? So either way, I was either way, he was win, good. Win. Yeah. Nah, that's that's what's up. So I recorded it in the crib, chilling. I freestyle off the top. I ain't even write that shit. And um, I like how you just said that mad casually. Like, don't say that mad casually. Say it one more time so the people know. Like, oh yeah, I freestyle shit so off the top. I ain't even write it. Wow. Yeah. So my whole last my whole last project for the travels it was freestyle. I didn't write nothing. Wow. Yeah, the whole thing. I, how, how do you do that? It's just easy, bro. Like, Don't say it's easy because it's not it's easy. It's easy to me. <laughs> okay, it's that's easy different. to me just for the simple fact that I'm really rapping about my daily life. So it's like something that I did say, something that I heard, something that I'm doing, I'm rapping about it. And a song is only two minutes. So it's like a whole day is 24 hours. I could rap 24 hours in two minutes. That's, that's so interesting. It's easy. I'm not capping about what I'm rapping about. So it's, it's easy to me. I just started writing now just to... Go more in depth, mm. really like trying to rap, rap. Like before, I was rapping, but I'm just talking. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm really trying to rap, like put shit together using metaphors, using you know shit like that. That adds to yeah. the, you know what I mean? Like that adds to the palette. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you have something going and you know you got, yeah. you go with this and yeah, adding yeah. something else to like. I want people to really think about what I'm rapping. Like go back, like oh Shane, you know he meant that. Like that's what I'm doing now on this album. Like showing people that I could really rap for sure. So the the. The song we on, you did the you did the video, you I got the you. feature. Let's talk about that feature, Babyface Ray, so, how that come about and all that. I got the song. I'm like, yo, we need we need to get somebody on this. For sure. I left the open verse. I'm like, we gotta get somebody on this. I want the ESCG. His price is all the way up. Off the rip. I'm yeah. like, nah, we need to get somebody more on our budget. So we hit a um we didn't even hit him up. My boy, we thought about Babyface. So we're like, fuck it, we gotta get Babyface, but we couldn't get in contact with him. But my boy West, I and Cali, he's connected. Like, he works with um, Ganga. I don't know if you know the famous tattoo artist. I've heard of it, yeah. Ganga, yeah, he worked with him. He worked with um, Connolly, the dentist that do everybody teeth and shit. So they connected. So Connolly's connected with Barryline. So he put that together for West to talk to Barryline. Barryline spoke to West. He said, yo, I need Babyface Ray. So she gave the price. We're like, I bet, let's get it, I'm ready. I'll send it right now. But she said, I bet, send it. So I sent the deposit, then she pulled up, probably like three days later, it was rolling out. Pulled up to New York, she said, yo, we in the stool, come to the stool, he gonna do the verse. 
I'm like, I bet. So I go to the studio. He's recording that shit right there. Off the top. Same way I record, he records. Crazy. Same way, like, off the top. He did that shit, like, in 20 minutes. He's like, you fuck with it? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm fuck with it. Like, let's get it. He said, all right, let's shoot the video tomorrow. So he went on stage, won't allow. He came to the hood, and we shot the video. Right next day. Right then and there. He didn't even know the lyrics to the song. <laughs> like, I mean, real, when you freestyle, you can't yeah, remember it completely. Don't know the lyrics to the song. So. Yo, but th- that's. That shit was lit, bro. Like I see the energy in the video. I see yeah. that. Like everything was like it looked. It looked really mm-hmm. good. Like I, 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 and that's another reason why I was drawn to it because I, I like the visuals yeah. and and it painted a picture of me of like, all right, this is who self made Kev is. Right, exactly. So I, I, I thought that was. I thought that was really dope. Yeah. Um. That's perfect. and it's just funny. It, 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 you said it was perfect timing yeah. in, in the song, and and now speaking of timing, it's the one year anniversary, like you said, yeah. of, uh, of 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 Trapper. Uh, what is for the Trappers? For the trappers. One. So how how do you feel about that? One year gone from that shit feel good, bro. It's like the fact that people thought that project was so fire, and it's like I'm nowhere near my peak. Like the music I got now is way better than like I feel like that's me just getting started. Like, I really feel like I just started rapping last year. That's how I feel. Like my career just started, so it's like my peak is nowhere near close. And, and, and the video guy and they they gave us they gave you a shout out also, uh, Gillian Wallow, right? Yeah, Gillian Wallow. So how, how they just like you just woke up they one day fuck, and it, they fuck with me, bro. They fuck with me heavy. Like, that's ben, what's up. Been fuck with me, so that shit was off the strength. Like yeah, that shit was love. That's that's what's up. I yeah, I, I you know I are you are you interested in signing to label at this point? Or are you just like, damn, I'm doing this by myself so far? Like, why? Like, I'm interested in starting to label for the simple fact that it's hard for independent artists to get in these doors. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, labels got first dibs off the rip. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could be popping, blah, 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 but it's hard to get somewhere if you're not with a label. So it's like, I want to be able to get in them doors because I know when I do get in them doors, I'm going to make a big impact. Especially me being from New York and my sign is so different from everybody here. Like I know I'm gonna stand out like a sore thumb. You definitely have a, a, a unique sound yeah. to yourself, especially being from Highbridge from the Bronx. Um it's definitely a unique sound, but I definitely I, I fuck with it big time. I appreciate you, bro. I so you wanna be signed, yeah. you you're looking to be signed yeah. by a major. Mm-hmm. I, I I meet a lot of artists that are like, yo, I want to go indie and see how far I could take this. Nah, indie and then you can. I mean, I'm seeing how far I could take it, but until a label come knocking on the door, like, yo, Kevin, we want you, and the money right, the deal is right, I'm going. That's another thing too, right? You, you know got to be careful like, with the deals. The deal, that, yeah, yeah, because money ain't nothing. Like at the end of the day, I got to pay that back. So it's like, I'm glad you know that. You know what I'm saying so. It's like I'm not gonna take five million dollars, and I'm not making five million dollars on my dashboard, like. You know what I'm saying? Like, that plays a big factor, too. Like, know what you're making already from music on your dashboard, and then go back to them labels. Like, yo, this is what I'm making. This is what I can work with. I know I'm going to make this money back from you, and we're going to work out a deal. Like, that's that's a lot of people it's a lot, understand it's a lot of It's a lot to the business. Like, And I'm very in tune with the business, thanks to, thanks to my manager, Jose. Like, He's very helpful. Very, very important. A lot yeah. of people go in this game and they all oh, they sign a $1.2 million deal, and you're like, oh, this person's a millionaire. They're not a millionaire. No, they're not a millionaire. Now they're in debt. And for 1.2 so you million, gotta make, you gotta make that back, and you you gotta make it back. You so make make it back. in in your videos, you, like I said, you see the cars, you see the jewelry and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. what what it looks like you have all the things that that people get in this rap game to to like they they start rapping for. Mm-hmm. So like, what's the what what's the, what's the goal for? Nah, it's different. That shit ain't nothing. Like all the jewelry and all that shit. That shit ain't nothing. Like I really want to make a way for all my people. Like. My, my brothers, like I said, I got like 15 brothers that I could call and you feel me? I want to make a way for them. I want to make a way for my siblings, my mom, my, you know what I'm saying? Like, make sure my daughter, of course, make sure everybody good. They don't got to work. They don't got to struggle. They don't got to go through what I go through just to be where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's really my biggest goal. Make sure they are straight for life. Now, also, by, by, by them being straight for life, um, I'm assuming that, you know, you don't want anybody to be dealing with the shit and so, so like you're putting a lot on your back yeah there's a lot of weight on my back that's a that's a big task but I, it seems like you're very confident about it like yeah, yeah i'm up for it of i'm ready to go and, and you course. got the people shouts to i know they can't see it in the camera but you got people here that you know that that believe in you and that and that's a powerful thing i i guess my question is do you want to be known as the best of that's, course i do want to be known as the best yeah i work hard for this so i want to be known as the best if not one of the best Okay. I don't want to just do it just to do it and that shit. Like, I want to be remembered for it. 
okay. as well as being able to help everybody. Okay, you know so because I, mean? I have my own selfish goals too, but my unselfish goal is just to make sure everybody good. Okay, you know I mean? definitely respectable. I also wanna, you know, a lot of people. I, I, we spoke about we on because would you say that's your biggest record? Yeah, of course. Okay, so then. Uh, we spoke about We On, but I know with artists, a lot of the times, it's not the biggest record that's their favorite record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you have a favorite record, and why is that favorite? Why why is that your favorite record? I say Spend the Dove is my favorite record. So okay. For the simple fact that that's the that's the first song I did with the new sound. Okay. You feel me? No auto tune, like. So it's like, and the vibe I got from that song is really what gave me the confidence to really like. Go hard for it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. Yeah, that's my. So beat. that was the that was the lead off yeah. batter that. Yeah, I put a I put a snippet on my story and that shit got mad love. So it's like that shit gave me the confidence I needed. That that's what's up. So yeah. okay, yeah, okay, that's good. Dove is my favorite song. It is an anthem. Like I play that shit anywhere. That shit goes stupid. So. It motivates you. And and so I know you told me that when 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 you made when you made We On that you was like yo I got the beat so like you knew it was gonna be a hit. Of course. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. Because I, I feel like a lot of people spend money on tracks and producers nah, and stuff. I knew it was and... gonna go. I knew it was gonna go. I knew it just off the simple fact that I went for the big producer. I went for the big feature. A lot of people do that, but it don't hit. Nah, it's gonna hit. <laughs> <laughs> see, I like it's I like the hit. confidence. Uh, wh where where do you see yourself? Where do you see Self Made Kev in five years? I just want to be where I just want to reach that goal where I know everybody good. They don't gotta struggle ever again. For me, everybody got their own business, everybody working on their own. That's really what my goal is. That I want my friends to become bosses and they put their family to work to become bosses. You know what I'm saying? That's where I want to be in five years. That's and it. five years is a long time. I want to really do that next year. You know what I'm saying? Like five years is just. Your life could change the next month. Yeah. The next yeah. 15 days, you know? Yeah. And, and, and uh, what would you say you've learned? Like the most important thing you've learned about making music or the music business so far in your career? I know your career is young, yeah. but what's the, what's the most important thing you've learned? Uh, the most important thing I've learned, be patient. Be patient. As an up and coming rapper, nobody's waiting for you to drop any music. So make sure that when you do drop music, it's impactful, it's exactly what you want it to be, and um, it's different. You know what I'm saying nobody's you're not Drake nobody's there begging for you to drop music like of course your close friends your close friends they win but the broad audience they don't really know who you are so it's like when you do you have to make it impactful so that those people could be like wait who's this like you said you really like my visuals and stuff I make sure that I invest my money in my visuals so that when very important do tune in they all rip like my videos that's very yeah. very important um you talk a lot about lean yeah. in your music yeah. <laughs> Uh, I I want to know, and I and I ask this to every every artist that I that I bring up here, but I also I, I think everybody's perspective is different. Um, when Self Made Kev is in a trajectory that he's going up, right, and more people are watching his stuff, more people are listening to his stuff. Yeah. How do you feel about the thirteen year old, the fifteen year old kid that is watching and is hearing you talk about lean and stuff, and like, do you do you feel do you feel any remorse about that? Like, or are you just trying to like? You're just telling your story, like, well, how do you feel about that? I can't control that, like, I'm just telling my story, so it's like, I was listening to Future growing up, all them people that drink lean, that ain't make me want to go and sip lean, like, I didn't really care about that, I ain't never smoked, I ain't never drink no liquor, so it's like, I don't care about that. Me drinking lean, I was in that part of my life, I was depressed, I ain't want to do, I ain't want to smoke, I ain't, I wanted something that helped me sleep, I wasn't sleeping. So mm. I was drinking lean, heavy. Like, I would be laying in my bed, pour up lean, and just go to sleep. Just to help me sleep, I wasn't sleeping. That's so, tough, you know? Yeah, and so then you hear about the rappers that pass away from that shit. Yeah. Or that have the seizures that are, like, damn near flirting with death. Right, right. When it, when it comes to that kind That's of stuff. Tough. I mean, I, I know how to control it. I ain't really... I sip lean every single day. Like, you know what I'm saying? I used to, but not no more. I, don't, I ain't on that no more. Somebody I had up here, um, he had a near-death experience, and he was also from the Bronx. Uh, my boy uh, Justo, yeah. he he had a, he had a near death experience in Cali. He told me about that, so I, I just wanted to ask yeah. you because I know a lot of people like I always wonder about that from the perspective. But it's true, you're not obliged yeah. to, to to be like, all right, like I gotta control your life, I gotta tell you what to no, do. You're just sharing your story. Yeah. Stay off the drug, you know what I'm saying? But that shit, I ended up drinking it, and I got a little bit hooked on it, you know what I'm saying? But I recommend everybody stay off the drugs, especially if you play sports. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? That shit would fuck you up. Luckily, when I played sports, I wasn't on none of that, so. Word to word to Daryl Strawberry and Lamar know. Odom and them. And it's, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of examples, you know. I'm not not yeah. trying to be funny, but nah, it's true. You bro. know, that shit no good. That shit. It start from weed and it go to something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it could definitely. So okay, so you spoke about uh, future. Do you ha did you have any other influences also? Like yeah, hell yeah. Um, who's I'm, your favorite artist? Future. I thought you were gonna be like self made kid. Nah, <laughs> future. I mean, of course, I listen to myself a lot. Like, probably more than future just based off my makes sense music you know what i'm saying like i listen to myself a lot but future is my biggest influence nice future, every dirk little baby like you know those people who who's the who's the if you had to pick one of those three yeah. for collab who you picking that's tough i ain't gonna lie yeah i know that's tough. <laughs> i know they all three bring different shit yep they but you got you you only got the budget for one or just one of them just period just i say little baby little baby yeah just because he's younger Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, just because he's younger. You got you got to calculate all these things, yeah. right? No, that's, that's what's up. So I like how little baby be popping and shit. I I um I is there is, can we expect? I know that you put out what I think it was like three months ago. You put out uh, City Nights. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Then I drop um give me some the single. Okay. Yeah. So we are we gearing up for another project? Or? Yeah, definitely. I'm about to drop um. Part two? Uh, I'm, about drop, I'm about to drop a single, Throw It Up, with um, Rob Foran, he from Philly. Okay. That's going to go crazy. That's dropping on Friday. And then um, definitely for the Trappers volume two. Okay. Definitely. So that's definitely going to be the name? Definitely. Definitely dropping. Okay, okay. That's yeah. what's up. That's going to be the best project. That's going to be project of the year. Project coming of the year? Out, coming out of New York, that's going to be project of the year. Okay, what yeah. do, do you have an expected like when you plan like first quarter, second quarter? I don't know. Just whenever it drops, it's gonna be the one yeah, for the year. Whenever it drops, it's gonna be the one. Sign him up yeah. for the Grammys, ladies and gentlemen. He is looking for a Grammy consideration. No. You know, fingers <laughs> crossed. This is gonna happen. Is there any last minute thing that 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 perhaps you want to say? Anybody you want to shout out? Shout plug? out um, for the world, my producer. He the hardest producer coming out of New York. Like, ain't nobody better than him. Fire. Funny fact, the song never fold. That's where I got the tag for him. Where I say, um, don't be asking about producers. For the world, just make this beat. Mm. So now when you start hearing my songs and you hear, for the world, just make this beat. We got it from that song. So like, fire. It came organic. And that was fire to me. Okay, so big big shout out. Big shout yeah. out to producers. Is there any, any other thing before you... I want it. All your social media, everything, all yeah. the promo. This is the time. Follow me at selfmadecav underscore. Probably everywhere. On YouTube, Apple, selfmade, space, cav. And um keep strong okay, listen, keep streaming, yeah, keep, streaming keep streaming for the trappers, keep streaming. We on we trying to listen, we got we we trying to get that that, that plaque. Yeah, What's up with that plaque? plaque? I need a plaque for sure. And when you get that plaque, I'm gonna need a plaque too. <laughs> Say no more, ladies and gentlemen, but before I let you go, you know you gotta spit some fire for us, right? Yeah, I'm gonna you know you got it. Elephant pick, ladies and gentlemen, we out here, Frank Roth, self-made Kev, it's a wrap done.